What's up everybody? Thanks for joining us today where we go over the top three upgrades for a concealed carry handgun. And that's upgrades with two Ds for a double dose of pimpin'. Welcome to the Concealed Journey. I'm your frugally fashionable host, Damien. And if you practice safe texting by using commas, please consider getting over there and blasting that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel and get down in that comment section. Give us some constructive criticism, positive feedback. Let us know what you think are good upgrades, something that you've done to one of your handguns, or some content that you'd like us to bring you in the future. Moving on with the bow body, we're gonna address the top three at least notable upgrades as far as we're concerned over here at the Concealed Journey. That's gonna include a holster, sights, and potential extensions like mag release or slide release or framework, interchangeable with those last two there. So first off, with the holsters, maybe you do, maybe you don't consider that to be an upgrade. I do. Uh, I've, I've met some people that carry a gun without a holster, whether it just be in a pocket like with an LCP or you're carrying something like an LCR or a 340PD in a coat pocket. You don't necessarily need a holster at that point in time with those kinds of carries, but I highly recommend and prefer to carry in a Kydex holster. My carry placement of choice is gonna be an appendix carry inside the waistband. That's gonna be at noon, just underneath my belly button. And I absolutely advocate that you wear Kydex. I, I don't recommend nor agree with leather or nylon, personally. We can get into the weeds about that. We're not going to here in this video. Please refer to another one of our videos as far as the pros and cons of Kydex holster and wear on your body to actually wear it. But to suffice it to say, Kydex holster. As an upgrade for sure, um, somewhat of a necessity, I, I think it's immoral and irresponsible of you to carry a gun without a holster if you're going to carry it just like some rogue vigilante from your favorite action movie where they just tuck it in their waistband without a holster uh, i think that's a little immoral so holster as an upgrade for sure a couple of holsters that we recommend uh, that we're proud of is going to be tier one concealed for sure absolutely i think everybody here at the concealed journey at least owns a tier one concealed holster Another great company is going to be T-Rex Arms, for sure. Midwest Tactical Solutions, QVO. Uh, let's go with the Kennedy Company as well. Some fantastic companies out there making holsters. Secondly, we'll talk about sights as an upgrade. If you're a Glock fan, let's say, even if you just own a Glock, um, I would say technically I'm probably a Glock fanboy. I think I own like 12 at this point in time, uh, the majority of them being a Glock 19. Every single one of my Glocks has aftermarket sights on it because I think it's absolutely atrocious what Glock is doing and has been doing for 30 or 40 years and putting those ridiculous plastic dovetail protectors on their guns from the factory. Shame on them for that. Otherwise, I think a Glock is great. Definitely... Uh, a robust gun, simple and definitely functional. Certainly not for everybody, but that's why there are other manufacturers out there. Whether your gun does come with super nice sights straight out of the box or not, um, if not, I highly recommend aftermarket sights. Not only for their durability, but also for, let's say, day and night or low light shooting capabilities. These ones specifically here are from Chigicon. These are their HD sights, as well as uh, their XR sights, I think are really nice. I've got a pair of XRs on my Glock 43. That is a thinner front post. But you can see here, they also have a high-vis front orange, and they've got a U-notch rear with a flat face on the front of the rear sight. And that's good for one-handed manipulations if you ever get into that kind of predicament, or you're just trying to practice it for whatever kind of sake. Highly recommend sturdy and robust, as well as high-vis, intuitive to the eye, clean, sharp sights. Uh, Glock sights I don't think are sufficient. I think they're counterintuitive and confusing to the eye, as well as easy to break. A couple of companies that make aftermarket sights that I would recommend, definitely gonna be Trigicon. Like I said, these are the HDs. Um, XS makes some great sights as well. Ameriglow. Um, and Haley Strategic makes some. 
War and Tactical, uh, the Savignis, those are cool sites as well. My brother's got a set of those. Uh, they're the straight eights, I believe is what they're called. Pretty interesting de design. Definitely something to get used to um, if you're moving from like a three dot system over to the straight eights or, or like the I dot system that XS has as well, or big dot is what they're called. Um, that's a different kind of sighting system that I'm not quite used to moving from a three dot site over to the big dot. But uh, functional and uh, glow in the dark is super nice. These have tritium specifically, so they're always on. You don't actually have to charge them with the light, which is a good point because if you're going to be carrying this under your clothing all day long, these sites aren't going to be able to see or get any sort of light on them to charge them throughout the day. So having them filled with tritium so that they're just radioactive and always glowing, I think is a must if you're going to consider getting aftermarket sites, specifically night sites. So number three slash four of the upgrades for concealed carry pistol are gonna be framework and then extensions like a magazine release or slide stop. So with number three being that framework, uh, as you see on this Gen 4 Glock on my right, your left, you can see that it's been stippled. And typically I do appreciate a little bit more aggressive texturing on a handgun, so stippling doesn't go unappreciated on a gun for myself. But whereas over here on this Gen 5 on your right, uh, you can see that there is no stippling on the frame itself. This stock texturing that comes with the Gen 5s, I do find adequate. However, I do appreciate a little bit more aggressive texturing, so I'd be fine with this one being stippled, but it's not entirely necessary with how the Gen 5s come nowadays. You can see here though, on the front, we do have an accelerator cut. This is somewhat of a ledge in a way, as well as an index. So on the right side, being as that I'm a right-handed shooter, this is an index for my trigger finger, and on the left side, it's an index for my support thumb to get placed on, as well as a point of leverage to drive the front of the gun down. These are two things that I've found to be really helpful, but not entirely necessary on a handgun. One thing, as far as framework is concerned, that I can't go back on is actually going to be a high undercut under the trigger guard itself. Whether the fact that maybe I have thick knuckles or just fat fingers, I've noticed that having that high undercut really allows me to get a higher grip on the gun and I find it more comfortable for my fingers to rest underneath that trigger guard. Specifically on a Glock, I think the trigger guard is really bulky and it's obviously rectangular and squared off on the edges and I just can't get the real estate that I appreciate for a comfortable grip on the gun. Moving on after that with the slash four is going to be extensions. Like you notice here, I have an extended magazine release and I find that to be really helpful and useful, actually more efficient personally because I don't have super long thumbs. So being able to access that magazine release with my thumb without having to completely break my grip actually makes shooting a little bit more efficient for me. On this gun, what you don't see is an extended slide release. Um, a company that makes a nice slide release is going to be Vickers Tactical, um, as well as Cagworks makes uh, an extended slide release that lifts up and then protrudes back for the kind of folks that have a really high and thumbs forward grip with their support hand. It gets that slide stop out of the way. I find those things to be helpful. Like I said, these are upgrades. I wouldn't find any of these things to be absolutely necessary. Besides, honestly, sights with a Glock and a holster just in general to name a few. A couple of other upgrades that I think are nice to be mentioned anyway are actually going to be uh, like a trigger. Um, keep in mind if this is something that you are going to carry all day every day for personal protection, um, keep in mind the kind of triggers or trigger work that you're going to do with your concealed carry handgun. Not only are there some legality issues that may come with that which I'm not entirely aware of. I'm not a lawyer, so please don't take any of this as law. But from what I've heard, there are some legality issues that could come in with upgrading your trigger. But more importantly is actually going to be the fact that you might end up messing with the engineering of the handgun. Being is that these guns are specifically designed for the dimensions and figures of the triggers that come in them. If you start adjusting parts and pieces, it could essentially affect the functionality of the gun. And in a case in point in time where you might have to deploy this handgun, and for some reason, whatever that upgrade was that you chose to perform on your handgun, leads that handgun to malfunctioning in potentially a catastrophic fashion, 
you've set yourself up unfortunately for quite the mishap. So keep that in mind if you're going to upgrade a trigger, maybe upgrade triggers more so on guns you just intend to use for the range and try to keep something as important as a trigger assembly on a duty gun untouched. Another thing to think about when you're talking about upgrades on a handgun is actually going to be a weapon light. So something that maybe some folks don't entirely find absolutely necessary. Um, I certainly find a lot of use in having a weapon light on my handgun. Things that we've touched on in the past are going to be actually able to turning this weapon light on and visualizing what we may be shooting at in a low to no light situation. It's absolutely paramount that you can visualize your target and that you can identify your target. You definitely shouldn't be shooting at anything in the dark. Now that comes along with also carrying an off the body light. Now as today we're just discussing upgrades on a handgun, I don't think that a weapon light on a handgun should be discussed without also at least pointing out an off the body handheld light. Super useful. Uh, the light on your phone is not sufficient for circumstances where you may be deploying your concealed carry handgun. So there you have just at least our top three kind of slash four upgrades that are at least notable. Something to consider when you're going to be buying a handgun. Things to consider because they are additional prices, not only just the sticker price on the gun sitting in the shelf, but then you've got varying prices from like I've got some XS sites on my 26 that were like 60 bucks on Amazon all the way up to these Trigicon HDs that are like 160 bucks. So a holster, right? Um, weapon light, optics, potentially, framework. These are all things to consider. If you're just gonna talk about the price of upgrades, does it really make you that much better of a shooter? That's for you to judge if it's worth the bang for the buck that you may be paying for it. As always, folks, we just really appreciate and love you folks joining us here. Consider heading on over to our website at theconcealedjourney.com where you can find swag, apparel, vinyls, also a weekly blog, training schedule, things of that nature. Hope you take care. Hope you appreciated the video. We'll see you next time. Must get chilly. I think maybe I gotta do some burpees or something, you know? Get that blood flowing, do some push ups. Just get yoked, bro. Swole Squad on the Buff Bus on the way to Ripped City. <laughs>